welcome you all in the after the second break so welcome as a host so i am abhay having uh, six years of industry experience and an ata member an active ata member i would say and i am a host for next few sessions so as i was saying as the ones i was on mute that the great sessions we had from sweta aditya sanjay and unmesh the before this before the break so power packed and insightful sessions are going on so i welcome dimpy to deliver the session on magic with selenium going beyond browser automation dimpy is an experienced software tester working as a test architect with 16 plus years of industry experience and currently associated with happiness mind technology bangalore and uh, for knowing more about dimpy you can go you, you can go on this url selenium summit agile testing alliance.org and there is a speaker profile so without uh, doing any delay welcome dipti and stage is yours thank you so much everyone so thank dipti. you abhay hello everyone uh, i'm dimpi and uh, today i will be presenting on uh, this topic magic with selenium going beyond browser automation uh, you all are actually having very good time including me you know watching so many interesting sessions from today morning and i also have something interesting to share with all of you so we will be uncovering some of the you know hidden the power of selenium uh, in this session Uh, this is the small agenda I have. So I'll be talking about uh, traditional versus modern automation with Selenium, uh, followed by demo and code walkthrough. And I will also talk about how we can combine actually traditional uh, automation with modern automation. So uh, the moment we say the word Selenium, right? So the first thing that comes into our mind is browser automation or browser automation testing or like you know web uh, workflow testing or mimicking the user interactions right so we generally start with writing some you know dedicated functional test cases and converting those test cases into automation script using selenium but selen the selenium is actually capable of uh, doing much beyond that right so we can actually combine selenium with other things like other native most importantly native interfaces as well and we can actually uh, you know solve many problems coming back to modern automation right so i will be actually sharing some of the use cases like gaming web scraping you know reading some content drawing and this is not just limited to this uh, particular list but uh, i will also show like how we can actually do all this using from a native interface so my bot will be actually driving the entire demo Uh, before starting the demo, this is the technology stack I have used uh, for this. So from the web technology side, uh, I have used Selenium Python binding, HTML canvas and JavaScript. And for the native side, uh, for the voice assistant, I have used speech recognition Python packages and Google text to speech Python packages and play sound libraries. And for data analysis and manipulation, I have used uh, pandas. uh let me start the first demo so this uh in this demo i will be showing how can we actually uh you know, play a game using selenium and the entire process will be you know uh, drive driven by a bot let me start the demo You can see like that uh, game was actually pretty fast. It took almost I think 0.9 seconds only to complete uh, the entire game in expert mode. Uh, but uh, when we test the game application, right? So what do we actually need it? We need uh, the 
major or the main logic, right? So in a game application, you may see different, you know, layers, right? And as a an user, when I play a game, I can actually you not know, play uh, as a you know, beginner level uh, or as an expert level, intermediate level, and I can win different levels and earn different points. So when we actually test a gaming application, right? and uh, as a human or as a functional tester. So we basically, you know, try to apply the logic or like, uh, you know, and we try to manipulate the logic to see like, okay, uh, with this logic, how is the game behaving? Or with that logic, how is the game behaving? What are the corner cases? And uh, using Selenium, we can actually speed up the entire process, right? And in this demo, you have seen like I integrated Selenium with native interfaces. Even I can you know, instruct the uh, bot to play the game in different modes, right? Or the different functionalities, whatever is available, I can tell the bot, okay, go and play with in this mode and tell me how the actually uh, my application is behaving. And bot can actually get the results back from Selenium and give it back to me. So this uh, use case uh, actually opens up a different horizon for me. Right, so I can actually uh, you know, integrate two very important part here, that native interface part as well as the web interface part. So uh, going to the my next uh, scenario or the next use case, and this is web scrapping. Uh, the people who are actually familiar with web scrapping, they know like how powerful is web scrapping, right? So uh, when we need some you know information from a web page, and we really don't want to you know spend more time, we want all the information in a meaningful format. We use web scrapping, and there are different uh, tools available for that. So. Uh, again, in this use case, I will be instructing the bot to you know get some information from Nokri.com site. Like you know, I have given like okay, I want uh, job details in this particular format, and you give me like company details or salaries or locations. Uh, this is completely configurable, and. Uh, uh, bot will perform the actions on the uh, on the web page using Selenium, and it will give me back the results. One thing I have used here is uh, Selenium headless mode to speed up the process because uh, I'm interested in the end result here. I want that uh, the file which the bot will be generating in the last for me, so I am opening the browser in a headless mode. So I'm starting the demo. So you have seen like, you know, how I could uh, you know, get uh, relevant information from a web page using web scrapping. Uh, people who are new to Selenium, the headless mode is like, you know, uh, you can open a browser, but browser will be actually, op you cannot see the browser in the, in the screen. It will be in the background and you can do whatever you want to do. All the operations can be done in a headless mode. And uh, after that, I have actually uh, captured the details in a CSV file and the bot has given me that uh, file back to me. Now the application of web scrapping in our regular day to day life, right? So web scrapping is a very powerful thing and we can actually scrap anything from uh, any web page, right? 
you want to get some information from LinkedIn or you want to get any information from any meaningful information from Twitter, you can get it and you can use uh, libraries like Pandas to you know uh, format it the way you want to uh, you know, consume it. When uh, coming back to the regular testing, right? So suppose you have a uh, Apple web application, you have a page and uh, it has a lot of you know static static contents like you know a lot of menus, lot of links, you know images and you know uh, maybe headers, footers. So instead of you know writing different different test cases, you know we can actually test those things using web scrapping. So uh, just hit the URL, get the details and parse the needed ones in the needed format and you will be good to go to you know uh, do the validation. So that will actually speed up your development process and you can focus more on writing you know end to end business scenarios. Instead of like you know uh, developing small small scripts for all those static stuff. So which web scrapping uh, actually helps. Uh, next use case is reading uh, web content and this is my favorite one. When I start my you know day to day work daily when I logged in for my work you no know, first thing I you know go to some news sites and see okay what's happening in the world. So why not use Selenium here? If you peek configure some of the you know your favorite news URLs and ask your bot to you know uh, get that information every day in the morning to you. Just you know get the information and play it back to you. Uh, that is one use case and the second use case is uh, you know, getting a clear reading experience. Uh, many of us when we read right so some blogs or some articles we see like a lot of ads like in a maybe sidebar, top bar, bottom bar, it will be bombarded with a lot of ads. So when I read something interesting or you know, uh, I want to focus mainly on the content I'm looking for. So what this use case is all about, like how can we actually you know, outline uh, some uh, blogs content in a very clear format. So there are uh, available uh, websites like outline.com which can actually do that and it will uh, convert a blog content into a very nice looking you know readable format which we can share with our friends. So this is another interesting scenario. So I'll be starting the demo now. Lots of uh, ads in the background. And this is my clean article. Hope you liked the reading experience. 
I just love this reading experience because uh, of two things. One, it is very clean and it is distraction free. And uh, top of that, I can actually add my comments, anchor it, anchor it in the page itself, and I can share that link to my friends. So another uh, use case I would like to share is playing videos using Selenium. Uh, what exactly I'm doing here? Uh, I have pre-configured the YouTube channel from where I want to get the video. So my bot will be actually connecting, uh, opening the URL in uh, URL and uh, it will give me the list of uh, videos under the channel and it will play the latest video. So let me start the demo. So uh, you have seen like it played actually the latest video from TTC channel and it has given me also the link of videos which I can play later on. So my last of uh, demo is uh, doing some drawing or coloring in HTML canvas. If you see uh, there are actually a lot of challenge uh, the way HTML can, the way we can do uh, automation testing on a HTML canvas, because when we inspect the canvas, we can see only the ID of the canvas. We cannot see anything which is happening inside the canvas. So the entire this demo is actually uh, done using J, uh, JScript and uh, Selenium execute script command. So let's see how uh, the bot is actually driving this. So I have covered uh, five useful uh, use cases. Uh, how can actually we combine modern as well as traditional automation? So uh, now I'll be showing what is actually happening behind the scene or how actually all this magic is has been created. Let me uh, walk you through with the code. So the main class which I have created is assistant class and as I mentioned before, I'm using a speech recognition library. Then I'm using a Google text to speech library and play sound uh, to interact with the native part and all other things I am using uh, Selenium and all the Selenium known uh, libraries. So uh, in this class, basically I have only two simple method. One is talk method and one is respond method. So the talk method, what it will do, it will just, you know, uh, recognize whatever I am speaking and it will give me that information to me. And once I get like, you know, once my program is able to recognize my voice and what I am speaking, so I can uh, use that in the response uh, module or response method. So the response method will use uh, Google text to speech library as I mentioned before. So it will convert uh, the request into a MP3 format and then uh, using play sound library, I will play the 
sound. And after that, I'm removing the file. I'm not storing the file in the system. So this is the native part actually, and uh, this native part is supported with Selenium. So in my uh, main method, I have uh, mapped all the request response to uh, the corresponding modules I have written. Uh, for example, playing Sudoku, right? So I have a method for playing Sudoku and I'm looking for this particular uh, no, word in the text. Yeah, this is a very uh, simple implementation of uh, voice uh, assistant. I'm just doing a text based match here, so I'm not using anything, any AI libraries here, and I have not trained my bot basically, so I'm just uh, using the text based uh, thing. And for each uh, no, skill, I have mapped to my individual modules. So let me walk you through the individual modules as well, one by one. For the Sudoku player, so uh, main thing is uh, we need the logic basically, right? So to play Sudoku, we need the logic. So once you have the logic in place, so you can actually open the page uh, using selenium and perform the actions like uh, for example the selecting the difficulty level right so those things very well you can actually uh, pass to the bot itself and bot will uh, you know take the difficulty level from you and then you know perform the action and once uh, the user and interactions are you know set so we can play the game and we can get the actually results back to the bot like okay what is the score i got you know what kind of validations i want to uh, do uh, those are the things we can actually implement here and the logic i have used is you know building uh, already available in the internet i just you know put that on from net and i am using here but for our testing actually this kind of logics we can uh, we can change we can manipulate based on our uh, scenarios and this uh, test case uh, we can verify using mi also then uh, we have uh, youtube scrapper uh, class here I have a method for opening videos from YouTube so uh, I'm opening it actually in a headless mode here and then uh, I'm executing uh, a JavaScript to get the scroll height and then I'm getting the de details and uh, after that <coughs> I'm getting the list uh, and I'm putting back to the bot to you know play it back a very simple implementation so i have similar thing for uh, reading news like i'm reading it in headless mode and uh, then passing back the list to the bot so that bot can actually play it back and similarly for reading articles also the outlining part i have done in a headless mode and then i am opening the both the urls in two different uh, urls <coughs> and showing the differences and I have this job scrapper for the, from the Nokri.com. So here also I am using a headless mode. So I'm opening the URL and uh, I have actually passed uh, how many pages I want to you know, scrap that number in my config file. And it is creating uh, that data, getting that data and uh, putting it in a structure. And finally that structure I'm passing to pandas to create the CSV file. So this is the CSV file which was the output. And I have a simple uh, config folder here where I am putting all the URLs, you know, or number of uh, job pages. I have kept three. So all these things are configurable here. So nothing fancy actually here. So all are simple things. And yeah, drawing on canvas. So drawing on canvas is like, again, I am using JavaScript. What I am actually uh, doing here. So I have a very plain canvas. So there's nothing drawn on this canvas. Just the uh, you know, uh, border is set. And uh, using JavaScript, I have uh, done all the operations. So how we can actually do it? So get the canvas ID and get the uh, 2D context. And with that object, you can perform whatever actually you know needed in the canvas directly uh, when we test actually this kind of applications and we want to automate it one thing you need to uh, remember like uh, 
only using this particular method may not be sufficient. You may need to trigger some of the events also because when we, you know, as a as a tester or as a functional tester manually, when we perform those operations, we actually generate some triggers or events. So, uh, yeah, those events also we need to actually generate from the code itself, and that is very very well possible when you use uh, JavaScript. So this is a code again, a simple code for uh, no, doing something on the canvas. I'm just uh, no, calling those functions using execute script and people who are new to Selenium execute script uh, is a uh, Selenium function. So where we can uh, no, execute uh, JavaScript directly on the browser. So this is the code behind. Coming back to my slides. So uh, in this demo, uh, what we have seen so far, like, you know, how can we actually combine traditional automation with modern automation? So we have combined some of the native interfaces for verification on a web page, and we have done some of the web scrapping, and we I also explained like how we can actually use web scrapping in our day-to-day -day life as well as in testing. So, Next thing, next demo, uh, next scenario was uh, JavaScript and Selenium to validate anything on Canvas. And there is one more interesting uh, you know, use case is uh, converting YFMs to HTML. So uh, when we start writing our you know, uh, automation script, we basically depend on the HTML page, right? So, and we uh, wait for uh, the time HTML page is actually ready for to be used. So we basically wait for the developers, you know, to code it and then give it us give us that part of the HTML and then from that HTML we start with inspecting the elements or generating our script. So uh, what we can actually do, we can there are ways to convert wireframes to HTML and from the HTML also we can generate our scripts and we can generate very well generate our page objects which uh, saves a lot of time. Uh, one more use case is uh, data entry work. If you see in data entry work, uh, no, involves lot of pages, lot of documents, and those kind of work actually uh, can be uh, can be speed up with Selenium. So these are some reference links I used uh, for the demo. Uh, this is about me. You will get all the details about uh, my profile, my GitHub, and all this uh, demo code is uh, available in my GitHub. And my uh, okay, so uh, I am done with my presentation, and uh, here is the summary and call to action. So we have seen like how we can combine traditional and modern automation and you know feel the real power of Selenium. So what I am actually expecting from the audience is like explore more and more use cases to uncover the real power of Selenium and do some experiment with you know, all these uh, different use cases and uh, encourage newcomers to learn Selenium by understanding the full potential of Selenium. Uh, I'm uh, closing my uh, presentation with this very beautiful uh, quote. And I'm ready to take questions now. Thank you so much, uh, Dimpi, for wonderful presentation. I have never seen this kind of uh, session with all the examples and talking boards, everything. So that was really, 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 really great. So very insightful, very nice session. So Thank you. here we can see one uh, thing posted. Super use cases, awesome implementation and amazing presentation. DMP. Thank you so much. So uh, guys, uh, we have uh, next four minutes to go. So if you have any questions, please shoot. Uh, DMP is there to answer all the questions. So please. Uh, yeah, Dimpi, this is Aditya here. Very nice presentation as what uh, Abhay said and uh, I go the words. Uh, quick one, since it was all done using Python and all, 
have you ever tried or uh, are there similar stuff available on the java side as well uh actually most of this native libraries are readily available in python but uh, java actually it is limited i will not say like it is not there few are there but uh, you know most of the things are available in uh, java i mean in python sure and would you be sharing this uh, in your github github uh, somewhere would you be sharing uh, all the code base as well what yes, you demo yes. yeah okay. i have already uploaded in my github account all right great great session thank you so much thank you any other questions as the title says the magic so i would say i would copy gosli that uh, truly magical yes it was truly magical i'd like to ask you one question quick one adimp yeah. uh, so those who are not much familiar with python those mm-hmm. who know java who do ui api automation using java mm-hmm. what would be your advice to them like how they can get started with python and then uh, explore things like the way you did it using those pocs or is there any other way which you would like to recommend them see uh, exploring a new language uh, should not be difficult if you already know java so the core programming concepts are same for all the languages so if you know java learning python is actually a bit easier so you can very well learn, you know learn python and explore different things but yeah in java also actually lot of things are available which are which we can use to you know power up our uh, automation scripts so so any any specific path you would like to suggest them when it comes to python test automation or how they can get started with that uh basically uh, python has lot of you know uh, scripting libraries right so what we i would i would prefer like take some use cases first and try to solve that problem using python so uh, once you have the use case ready just you know st- go step by step okay how i can actually solve this particular problem and then try to find out if anybody has solved it and then it's good enough you will get the code and try to learn what exactly that code is actually doing uh, if uh, no one has done it so it is you know you can start from scratch and you know try uh, try to build something of your own so uh, when you start it as uh, major problem is the starting problem actually so when you start it you can very well proceed because there are good communities available who can help you know if you are stuck somewhere uh, you no know, for java or python there is no difference you will get help from uh, everywhere and we all are there for the community to support okay thank you Thank you so much, Dimpy, for this wonderful, magical, and insightful session. It was really great to listen to you.